Good evening everyone, I'm Jan Rosaro B. Doctolero and I am your today's discussant. And our topic for today is all about Bloom's Taxonomy of Educational Objectives Revised. Here are the learning objectives. The original Bloom's Taxonomy, this includes the six levels of taxonomy. The revised taxonomy, including two dimensions of revised taxonomy and practical guides to revise taxonomy. So we come now to the old taxonomy. In 1956, Benjamin Bloom headed a group of educational psychologists who developed a classification of levels of intellectual behavior and its purpose is to have a framework to classify test questions that faculty was shared. Eventually, it became so relevant and useful in education. Since then, it has been used in planning the curriculum, planning learning, activities, and assessment. Eventually, other experts published a taxonomy in Effective Domain in 1964 and Psychomotor in 1966, 1970, and 1972. However, this module will focus on the Cognitive Domain. We all know that Bloom's taxonomy was organized into three domains, which are cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. However, educators have primarily focused on the cognitive model. It is logical framework for teaching and learning goals that would help researchers and educators understand the fundamental ways in which people acquire and develop new knowledge, skills, and understandings. So we come now to the original Bloom's Taxonomy. We have Knowledge, Comprehension, Application, Analysis, Synthesis, and lastly the Evaluation. Bloom identified six levels within the cognitive domain, from the simple recall or recognition of facts as the lowest level through increasingly more complex and abstract mental levels to the highest order which is classified as evaluation. So, let's move forward to cognitive domain levels and their subcategories. First, we have knowledge of specific, under knowledge, knowledge of ways and means dealing with specifics, and lastly, the knowledge of universal. In comprehension, we have translation, interpretation, and extrapolation. In application, it can be described as apply or applying, change, and produce. While in analysis, we have elements, relationships, and organization principle. And lastly, in synthesis, we have production of unique communication, production or plan or proposed set of preparations and derivation of a set of abstract relation. To sum up those domain and its subcategories, the result was framework with six major categories and many subcategories for the most common objectives of the classroom instruction. Those dealing with the cognitive domain, the categories were designed to range from simple to complex and from concrete to abstract. Further, it was assumed that the taxonomy represented a cumulative hierarchy. So the mastery of each simpler category was prerequisite to mastery of the next, more complex one. So we come now to the learning outcomes that students must learn after a particular subject course. So at the end of the unit, students will able to enumerate the characters of the story under knowledge, summarize the story under comprehension, apply the rules of the subject verb agreement when writing summary of the story, it is under application, compare and contrast the qualities of the character in the story under analysis, Write a song expressing the message or the lesson of the story in synthesis. Write a critic of the author writing style in evaluation. So we come now in the revised taxonomy. 
After 45 years, Dr. Lauren Anderson, a former student of Bloom's, and his colleagues published an updated version of Bloom's taxonomy that take into account a broader range of factors that have an impact on teaching and learning. Under the old taxonomy, levels or categories were nouns, but in the redesigned taxonomy, they are verbs. The use of action words rather than nouns was chosen to emphasize that thinking is a dynamic activity. The updated taxonomy is still organized in hierarchical stages of increasing complexity and it is meant to be flexible enough to allow for overlap across categories. So now, I'm going to present the old and revised taxonomy framework. As you can see in the graph being presented, comparing the old and the new taxonomy, there are changes in terms and emphasis in the old taxonomy. Evaluation changed to evaluate and in revised taxonomy, synthesis was changed to create and place it in the highest level. So let's move forward to the revised taxonomy and the two dimensions of cognitive domain. First is remember. Remember is retrieving relevant knowledge from long-term memory. It can also describe as recalling or recognizing. Then it would be the suggested activity. Recitations, worksheets, and fact charts. Since remember or remembering allows learners to recall and restate the information being learned. Next is understand. It is determining the meaning of instructional messages including oral, written, and graphic communication. It can also be described as interpreting, exemplifying, and classifying. Suggested activity, story problems, drawing, and summary. Since in understanding, the learner was able to grasp the meaning of information by interpreting and classifying what has been learned. In the other hand, we have apply or applying, carrying out or using procedure in a given situation. It can also be described as executing or implementing, suggested activity, presentations, role playing, and scrapbook making. Since in applying, later make use the information in real situation or in real scenario. And the last, we have the highest level of categories. We have create or creating. Putting elements together to form a novel. Coherent wall or make an original product. It can be described as generating, planning, and producing. Suggested activity. Framework story problems, poems. Children creates new ideas and information using what has been previously learned. After the cognitive domain, let's come now to the knowledge domain. First, we have factual. It is the basic elements that the students must know. The knowledge of terminology, specific details of element. Since factual is a knowledge includes isolated bits of information such as vocabulary and scientific details. Next is conceptual. It is the interrelationship among the basic elements with a larger structure enable them to function together. It can be classification of strategies, principles of generalization, theories, models and structure since conceptual provides systems of information to learn that allows them to classify and categorize it next is procedural knowledge it is how to do something methods algorithms techniques and methods it can be described as subject specific skills and algorithms subject-specific techniques and methods. 
since in procedural knowledge it includes algorithms and rules about when to use about this particular procedure. And finally, we have metacognition knowledge. It is the knowledge of con cognition is general as well as awareness and knowledge of one's cognition can be strategic knowledge or knowledge about cognitive tasks including contextual and conditional since metacognition it is the knowledge refers to thinking processes and information about how to manipulate these processes effectively so we come now to the uses of revised taxonomy first it provides educators with a common set of terms and levels about outcomes that help in planning across subject matter in grade level. Next, it helps the drafting of learning standards across levels. Next, it serves as guide in evaluating in school's curriculum, objectives, activities, and assessment. And lastly, it guides teachers in formulating learning outcomes that tap higher order thinking skills. So in uses of the revised taxonomy, it highlights students' learning outcomes. Bloom's taxonomy, which look at cognitive skills and learning behavior, was updated in the revised taxonomy. The updated approach includes changes to vocabulary, organization, and focus. Nouns like evaluation and sentences have been substituted with verbs like generating and evaluating. With the addition of structure creating or creation has risen to the highest level, the area dedicated to producing ideas or developing a new point of view. To sum up my report about the revised taxonomy, for future teachers and teachers, the taxonomy table may give a framework within which future instructors and teachers might model not only how they teach, but also how they examine and analyze their teaching. They should understand that the only way to assess the effectiveness of their instruction is to look at what students actually learn. And that would be all. Thank you for listening.